Should I just do it off? <laughs> I was just thinking that. Oh, I can do it off the cuff. I had could do one thing in my head that might work. Or do you want to play the intro music just to get us in the mood? Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Right. I, yeah. Obviously, we'll cut all of this. Yeah, maybe depends. Maybe <laughs> this is the new intro. <laughs> cut that. <laughs> cut that. <laughs> Let's just have a cheeky listen because that intro music is... It's quite extraordinary, isn't it? It's powerful. Yeah. See if it gets in the mood. In your guts. I was playing yeah. that whilst um, cleaning yesterday. It's, it gets, it's good, isn't it? Good to you along. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's not sure words that don't exist really. But, no, yeah. I do in my heart. <laughs> That's it, not in your brain. It's not in my brain. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay, and welcome to a new podcast called Gaps in Knowledge, where a geography teacher and a history teacher exchange facts and ideas between each other and have a good laugh about them. I am Reese, and I am the geography teacher, and with me is... Will, and I'm the history teacher, and my voice for radio is nowhere near as good as yours, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how that happens. Just, uh, yeah, I'm... <laughs> you just switch into it, it's an immediate thing. I don't know, but it's... But your voice is quite soft. Right. But that's been a bit. This, but a bit this. like two minutes in. <laughs> that the time you're say? But no, but anyway, just, just warm, you have to warm it up, don't you? You have to warm the voice up, warm the. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You have to, can that's you true. warm the softness up? My mother made meat pies. <laughs> is that the line? It is now. <laughs> that's going to be the line to warming up. The, the trouble is, where do you draw the line between warming up and ASMR? Because I don't want. Perverts. <laughs> Full stop. No, no, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't want to attract perverts. I've got like one and a half facts. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, do we need to explain the concept here? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, so what is the concept? I don't really know. <laughs> you did already say we're two idiots talking to each other for a bit. Yeah. Okay, so the basic idea. I know nothing about history. Mm -hmm. you... I, I know barely anything about geography. Yeah. I, I did win the geography prize at my prep school when I was 13. Which I think was a ten pound national book okay. token. Do you know what book you bought with that? Almost certainly, completely unrelated to geography. I see. Yeah. So it obviously inspired you to take geography as absolutely. A, as a I'm, I was as surprised as everybody. Yeah. Um, so I I cannot say I know anything about geography other than never eat shredded wheat. See. Yeah. And that's yeah. I don't use that one either. Oh, was, never eat shredded wheat. There's, there's not the elephant squirt water. Okay. Is an alternate one that does the same job. It's a bit more interesting. <laughs> it does. Yeah. We yeah. had never entertained. It was either sexy or shirtless women. <laughs> it depends. What? Neither of which are fantastic life advice, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was what age group you were trying to teach that to as well. Yeah, that's true. We're eleven. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the that's the break. That's the point, wasn't it? Where that's the transitional point. Is it? I think if a shirtless woman's coming up to an eleven-year-old, then <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's log off. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But that yeah, so I I dropped history when in year nine mm -hmm. because I didn't like my teacher. That's how it goes generally. But I also found it really boring as a child. Mm -hmm. I wanted stuff about things that were happening now or in the future. That's not history. That's, 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 that's because of the slightly, news or the future. Yeah, that's the opposite <laughs> of history, isn't it? Yeah, that's sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not how history works, unfortunately. No, that's kind of that's like. But yeah, I, history of Star Wars. That's that's sci-fi though. That's not history. No, that's not history, is it? That's, that's a like subdivision saying, of sci-fi. I like. I would enjoy McDonald's if they sold movies. So you're in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's movies. Oh, are you are you say if you were in McDonald's and they sold movies? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Or if you're in Blockbuster, when well, yeah, you're not you're anymore. in the wrong place. If you're yeah. in Blockbuster, then you're in the wrong time as yeah. well. You've come unstuck. And that's history. And that's history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we found a melting pot. What a segue. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of this podcast uh, that we're trying to work out on the fly at the moment yeah, is, good that, luck with this. <laughs> is that we have some wacky or interesting uh, 
ideas or facts that we've we've researched, and we're going to fill each other's gaps in knowledge because of our lack of understanding. Of, <laughs> yeah, we're filling in gaps of knowledge. Mm-hmm. I think is what we're trying to achieve in this in this segue. That's the idea. Podcast: educate, entertain, and whatever the third one is for the BBC. Well, I can tell you one interesting fact that I was saying. So, it's more of a, I'm going to introduce this more of a question. Okay. What, what country in Europe would you say produces the most bananas? Oh, I actually know the answer to this. Do one. you know the answer? Would to you this like one? to play dumb? Um, yes. Uh, bananas come from hot countries, so I'm going to guess somewhere hot like Greece. That's interesting. Because it's not Greece. It's not Greece. <laughs> no, it's not Greece. I know the answer. You do know the answer. Do you want to enlighten us what the answer is? It's Iceland, isn't it? It is Iceland. Do you know why it's Iceland? Because of all the lava. Be- yeah. Lava banana. The lava banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new name of my uh, tribute band. I, I gonna, I, now I need to think of who it's going to be. I'll tell you later. Chaz and Dave. Lava banana. La- lava. Come on. Wow, that was very good. My parents will like that joke. <laughs> But yeah, so they have um, they have they grow these bananas and they grow it in the in the south of Iceland in Reykjans is is in the, is in the south coast and uh, they've been doing it since 1941, which is, yeah right 1941 they've been growing bananas in Iceland. Were they not busy? Well, I, they're not. They <laughs> weren't part of the war. They were, they, did they do anything in the war? I don't yeah, know. They were, it was controlled by Denmark, and they were ooh, a little bit <laughs> okay. a little bit Nazi. So the British invaded Iceland in the Second World War. Was that the invasion where they were? Everyone was really polite. Yeah, I, I re- so. recollect something like that. It's like five uh, people just turned up in a in a little boat. I see, and the Icelanders were like, "Oh hi." Uh, were they like those? <laughs> I imagine the Icelanders on that moment were like mm. the the birds that on these islands in New Zealand that have no fear mm. because they've been isolated. They're yeah. like, <laughs> like endemic to. This. Yeah, wasn't the dodo like that? Yeah. yeah. What what's that? That's a human being. And I'm not <laughs> to be clear. We're not saying that Icelanders have the same IQ as dodos. No, we don't want no. millions of letters from Iceland. But can I tell you why that's not the case? Is because they can grow bananas in Iceland, and bananas. you need a higher IQ than a dodo to come to that conclusion to that's be able to do that. Probably true. Yeah, I've never seen a dodo with a banana. No, where would it keep it? Steady. <laughs> Filling <laughs> in your gaps. <laughs> yeah. That's your answer. They probably don't eat bananas, dodos. Well, they're dead now. That is true. They, it's quite famous. They ate too many bananas. Nah, and you know what happens when you eat too many bananas? Dead as a dodo. Yeah. Well, um, you're going to say something intelligent then, like you get potassium overdose. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, but I prefer your answer. <laughs> How many bananas do you think you'd have to eat to get a potassium overdose? Isn't it 12? It's only 12 bananas. 12 bananas. I mean, like, not in your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> the Grim Reaper ticking off. Of this. Yeah. This is banana checkup. You know. So 12 bananas actually sounds like a challenge. That you, I could eat 12 bananas right now. Could you? Yeah. I'll, get, them. I'll get the emergency number ready. Just dial 1-1. One, one, <laughs> have your finger, have over, finger the over the two. Yeah. yeah. I don't have any bananas. Is the only problem with that. And also, I don't really want to die. But... <laughs> But the upshot is we find out if it's true, and then it is quite, you know, it's quite a glorious way to go for the bananas. <laughs> is it not? What would you have on your tombstone? Um, Here lies William Flint, banana pillock. <laughs> well, uh, on a banana ride. <laughs> <laughs> on the great banana boat of infinity. Uh, yes. There you go. Hey, that's uh, that, yeah. That's on your tomb. That's your. We'll put it in your uh, like eulogy <laughs> as we read it out. That's <laughs> that must be the worst way. Like, just imagine how embarrassing the funeral would be. Oh, I'm sorry to hear of your loss. Are you really? No. It's hilarious. <laughs> no, it's really Twelve bananas. Funny. That yeah. That would go in the Darwin winning awards, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Of, of, of way to go. It's like the guy who got on a helium balloons attached to a helium chair. And then realised he got too high. Do you know what? That is exactly the one I immediately thought of. Oh, really? Exactly the same one. Yeah, they, they, he shoot, did he shoot them or did he just float off? I think he was floating. But there's a point where every second when you're floating above the ground and he didn't build, every second is always a bad decision whilst you're thinking. We could just get him worse every second. <laughs> I think I think that starts way <laughs> before you turn the balloons to the chair. Oh, yeah, maybe. Like buying the helium. <laughs> every second there's a bad decision. Yeah. yeah time and to, doing yeah. it alone. <laughs> Is 
probably why it happened <laughs> in the first place. There's a reason why he was doing it alone, though, because if you add one more person to that mix, they would just immediately go, Greg, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, someone <laughs> would stop that. I can buy you a plane ticket if you want. <laughs> you don't need to. You, you, it's could easier. Even, you could even take the balloon on the plane if you want. But it's, <laughs> it's not a problem. That's a, yeah. That's an afternoon gone weird, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just sat there and said, what should I do now? I've got tanks of helium. I do have an armchair. Hmm. That's, uh, that's, it, it has to be a significant amount of helium or a very light person. Or Yeah. There's so why the, the South Coast? That was going to be my question. So why, why the South Coast? I don't, I don't really know. I think it's a, the, the tectonic, so Iceland's over a hot spot. And mm-hmm. I don't know, so recently in the start of this year, 2022, yeah, yep. <laughs> there was that eruption in Iceland, wasn't there? Um, was that? In the southwest of Iceland, there was an eruption that was a, um, what they call an Icelandic eruption, which means it just, the earth sort of breaks up and the lava's very hot. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> there are different heats of lava. Let me just make that clear. Okay. <laughs> Different heats of lava, mm-hmm. and they're very. Uh, this one is more basaltic, so it's more. It's a lot harder, a lot runnier. Right. So it doesn't solidify. So it just okay. oozes out over. The area extent is the key word there. Okay. <laughs> it's very large. Right. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, so that, so it, it, the hot spot is quite prevalent in the south and south uh, west of the country, right. and um, so that seemed to be the logical place to okay. have the Atlas geothermal. I think that the larger geothermal part in Iceland is is in the south west as well. Right. So it's easy to connect up to the grid. Where the capital is. Pretty much, yeah. So I think it's about 30 minutes west of, uh, um, east. <laughs> <laughs> east of Reykjavik, yeah. <laughs> Never entertained shots. Yeah, there you go. We got there. We got there in the end. Okay. What do you know what Reykjavik stands for, just as a side note? No. It translates to Smoky Bay. Smoky Bay. Yeah. Oh, and Reykja is Icelandic for smoke, but if in German, Ralken is uh-huh. the smoke. So they're, so they're quite... It's the same thing. Quite linked quite closely. Right, and Vic, like Wick, like... There's yeah. places all over the west coast of Scotland called Wick. Yeah, Wick. Which means bay. Which means bay. Well, there you go. Yeah, Smoky Bay. Smoky Bay. But um, but the interesting thing I just uh, read about this was mm-hmm. um, this article I'm re- I was reading claimed that, that, that people like to say Iceland, has, they only produce, what, 2,000 kilograms a year okay. of bananas. That would kill you. <laughs> that would, <laughs> yeah, that would, yeah. That would, that would, yeah. <laughs> they dropped on you at first. <laughs> trip over them. Yeah. Slipped on them. There's a, there's a lot to slip on. Just keep slipping. <laughs> Perpetual down slipping. Like a like a clown based maglev train, just slipping all your way across. Yeah, Iceland. and yeah. maybe even just like, gradually accelerate as you do it as well. <laughs> and then you hit one big banana at the end, <laughs> and that's the killer and blow. That will kill you. Yeah. Now that is a good way to go. And that, yeah. Yeah. And I would hope someone saw that happen. That would be a bad way to go if you're doing it by yourself. Yeah. Because that split second, you'd think, this would be really funny. <laughs> just thinking, mm. we, I've just made, the, obviously, that guy in the helium balloon. Yeah. He, if he was by himself, yeah. that means the person who eventually found him mm. come to the conclusion that's how he died. What other uh, <laughs> conclusion could that possibly be? So maybe he was just having a birthday party and he had his balloons on his chair having a good time. And I don't know, but it's what? fifty helium <laughs> balloons. I don't know. It just it just seems quite an odd. You you rock up. Some guy's got a broken plastic chair with helium balloon. It's been deflated all over him. He has got broken legs, mind you. Yeah, <laughs> and he's split apart. It's you're e- you're either dealing with one of the stupidest people to have existed, or the most twisted serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the helium boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of, he's, he's very yeah. high pitched boy. Very high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call him the boy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a what a day that must have been. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No. For the person doing the balloon, the Greg we called him, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> Sean. Sean. He's Kevin probably. Yeah. <laughs> and the person also. who found him. Mm-hmm. And the little helium balloon. balloon Serial killer boy. At what point do you think the person who found him started laughing? Do you uh, start laughing immediately uh, or do you think, oh my God, he's dead? I even think even before. <laughs> <laughs> On the approach On too. On the approach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that would be a bad human being. But because he's laughing at the requisite that someone's dead. And then when he finds out, mm-hmm. he would be, in, he might laugh himself to death. He might. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Be funny if he inhaled helium blue and then started laughing. <laughs> Can you die of a helium overdose? 
<laughs> I don't know that Probably. one, but so you want me? To... Oh yeah, you can suffocate. Of course you can. You can yeah, because because well. if you yeah yeah you don't want to take in lots of helium like you wouldn't take any other substance. Help! I can't you... breathe. <laughs> can you breathe out? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. But what the article said, going back to Finally. this, <laughs> what, the, what the article did say was that like Iceland produces 2,000 kilograms of bananas. Yeah. Um, but it's a fact that people like to say because it's it's fun and convenient. Mm. However, actually, the answer really is Spain. Okay. Because of the Canary Islands. But the Canary Islands are really African. Yeah. That's and that's right. why Come people on. like to not count that, even Come though it's on. part of Europe. That's like saying that Britain used to produce the most tea because they owned India. Yeah. That's, come on. That's, that doesn't count, does That's it? cheating. So, so we can't say Spain. So we say sense. Iceland because it's convenient and probably because Canary Islands isn't part of Europe. Well, there you go. Iceland. So Ice- my dumb brain immediately thought that because it was the south coast, it's because it gets more sun than the north coast. But it's Iceland. It's, the it's Iceland. It, yeah. And you need to remember that the sun isn't the, the key factor here. No. It's the sun within the earth. Yeah. <laughs> that is the key energy. <laughs> yeah. Craig, can you just give me a little heads up before you blow my mind like that? The sun yeah. within the earth. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Maybe that's what goes on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> the banana flavored sun within the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Ben and Jerry's new flavour, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear split. There you go. Cool. Well, there you go. Iceland full of bananas. Yeah. Not really. Two two tons of bananas doesn't sound like that many bananas, if I'm honest. No. Like if and if that's the most in Europe, we're not really pulling our weight. No, we're not. We could do better than that. We should be doing better. Remember the carry islands are doing quite well, actually. Yeah. That, they're not in Europe. Yeah. No. Yeah. But- Canary Islands. Are this is almost certainly going to be cut because I'm going to get my facts wrong here. Do you know what the Canary Islands named after? Mm, canaries. Yes, got him. Absolutely got him. <laughs> Mel. Is it not Canaries? It's not Canaries. It's in the name though. Canaries are named after the islands. Wait there. Is it named after some islands? It's. Well, <laughs> Can I say, does that work? How the cursive do we get? <laughs> no. The focus here is the canary bit, I mean, isn't technically, it? Technically. <laughs> they are islands. Yeah, all right, fine. I'm the melt. <laughs> no, they're named after dogs because the Latin for dog is canis. And when, <gasps> when the, I presume, Latin speaking people, aka Romans, got there, a whole load of dogs hanging out on the island. So oh, I see. these are the dog islands, the Canary Islands. I see. And that's the where it comes from. Yeah. Ah. And then they found some little birds there. And Terrible then... birds. We don't. We I don't, don't know do much about canaries. Uh, it's a waste of time. Just get a parrot and grow up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> Could you get letters yes. for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then they found little birds, and I think they named the colour after the bird as well. So canary yellow, named after dogs. I see. Isn't it also Norwich City? It is Norwich City. Although why, I'm not sure. No, yellow, green. Mm-hmm. The colours of being in bread? <laughs> Is <laughs> just can tarnish, <laughs> <colour. laughs> tarnish a whole city. Yep. <laughs> isn't, that a thing? isn't that a cliche that it like, is, yeah. everyone in East Anglia is in bread? I think so. I think people say for Kent, though. <laughs> yeah, that's why Delia Smith's so good at cooking. She's got, got extra fingers to put in the pies. Because <laughs> that's how you cook. Yeah. yeah. That's how I was. Is that how you make a pie? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I've never made a pie. No, I've never made a pie <laughs> over. Oh, I've watched someone make a pie. <laughs> Why? Because. Are you have nothing else to do? <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to learn, but I didn't learn anything. Cause, right. Because it's boring. It's quite boring to make a pie. Yeah. So, Will, you have a history fact for me. We've talked a lot about bananas, so... Uh... Seamless cut there. So smooth. Yeah. Which I just ruined. <laughs> <laughs> and so, first go, it's okay. Welcome back. <laughs> um, yeah, so, when in your life have you felt like you've most been in the wrong place at the wrong time? About four years ago, five years ago, I did a trip to Belize, mm-hmm. hit by a Category 2 hurricane, mm-hmm. Hurricane Earl, it was called. And then a week later, or five days later... Uh, we were in Antigua in Guatemala and then the volcano erupted. So there's two places at the, twice at the wrong time in a row. In a, in a week. It, within a week, yeah. So that's probably, that's yeah. I mean, the job was great, but I think I was the only person there who was enjoying the experience. And at what point did you think, 
this is at least partly on me. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I've done it's, something I, wrong here. I think so. There's a probably a, a, there was probably yeah. I, what did I did? I, I probably said something to a Mexican at the beach. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what was going through? Absolutely through? cursed. Yeah, I did go uh, past the cow, which is the uh -huh. the, the Guatemalan ruins, the oh, Mayan right. temples. And did you honor the hummingbird god? No, but I did walk over the temple to get a good view of the Pacific Ocean. So that might have been it. That'll do it. Yeah, there That'll you go. Worst for me was uh, when I was in my first year at uni um, uh, in Edinburgh, my halls were backing onto Holyrood Park. So I go for a walk around Arthur's Seat and then come out by Scottish Parliament, which is at the bottom of the Royal Mile. And every now and then uh, there'd be protests outside Scottish Parliament. So it's kind of interesting to see. And there'd be like camera crews there and news and stuff. And one time I was just walking, uh, saw a protest, a couple of skinheads looked a little bit dodgy, thought, I'm just going to keep on walking. But as soon as I start walking, <laughs> they start following me. Of course. <laughs> and the whole protest, not in a threatening way, but just because this was the plan and it was like two o'clock and at two o'clock we march up the Royal Mile to the castle. And so... I don't know if I was on camera, but I certainly felt like I was because there may well be footage of me taking part in a far right neo Nazi rally <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> Slightly accidentally out of place. <laughs> Just like oh. skinheads and like large tattoo bearded, yeah. like Ein Folk, Ein Reich type people. You would have you would have been the antipode of, of, yeah. of, of expectance to be there. And I, I am not inconspicuous as well. <laughs> no. Because as it, how how would you describe me to those <laughs> listeners of ours who never I mean, seen me the before? first thing is probably your height. I'm quite long as a human being. As a human being goes, I remember you introducing yourself at the school we work at, and mm. as your interesting fact was, I am six foot nine. Yep. <laughs> And yep. then everyone going, we can see yep. that. No, you didn't need to tell us. <laughs> yep. But the beard, glasses, mm -hmm. the brown hair, like a Gandalf in training. Yes. Mm. Yeah. You just. Yeah, the, the wizardry's in the apprenticeship stage. Mm -hmm. Like a long, wiry mop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. forgetting into those top corners you can't quite reach. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, to be accidentally part of any rally is quite extraordinary. You, mm -hmm. you remind me of something that happened to me once okay. where I was driving through Hemel Hempstead, mm -hmm. going to a friend's house, mm -hmm. and uh, I took a, took a left at this roundabout and noticed crowds left and right of the road and mm -hmm. clapping and things like this. And I thought, that's a great welcome in Hemel Hempstead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I then also thought, well, the road was pretty empty. And then I looked <laughs> behind me in my mirror, and it's the Olympic torch <laughs> <laughs> coming behind me. Oh, <laughs> and I was preceding the Olympic torch <laughs> going to the London 2012. Wow. Which I thought was quite cool. I don't think that's on you. I think that's on the police. They shouldn't be allowing I've, people on the roof. There was a cordon that wasn't put up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so who... So I'm assuming well, we're going place. to... Yeah, wrong place, wrong time. I think the, the most historical wrong place, wrong time. One of them's... Archduke Franz Ferdinand started in the First World War, which we'll talk about at another time. But the one I've got today is a guy called Louis Stephen Witt. And maybe like one person who's listening, or the one person who's <laughs> listening, which is me in the future, will think, oh yeah, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But nobody will have heard of him. But who he was, was we're in Dallas in 1963 okay. on November the 22nd at 12.30. And... As JFK is coming through Dealey Plaza and going just past the Texas School Book Depository and past the highway sign, if you look on the Zapruder film at it's roughly frame 190, you can see just as JFK is coming past the highway sign, he kind of disappears behind the highway sign and then he comes out. His arms go up to his throat. He's just been shot in the throat, probably from the back. Uh, and if you look in the very bottom left-hand corner of, this, of the shot, there's a man holding an umbrella. This was a perfectly beautiful, nice, warm day. It's Dallas, so it's not cold. Mm -hmm. It's There's not a cloud in the sky. Nobody, if you watch the footage of the whole of the route through Dallas, nobody's carrying an umbrella except at the very moment that JFK got shot. And so, of course, everybody thought this guy's involved somehow. Why the hell is he carrying an umbrella? And that's like the obvious conclusion. There were like kind of theories that he put up the umbrella just as JFK was going past. And as he put it up, it fired out a, a flechette into his throat that killed him. Or he was a signal man saying, put the umbrella up. It's a go sign to people. Turns out he's just a massive nerd because... <laughs> 
what he was doing is he was protesting. And he was protesting in a way that only two people in the world would know what he's protesting. And those two people are JFK and Louis Stephen Witt. What he was protesting was 1963, we're in the middle of the Cold War. JFK doesn't want to get involved in the Cold War if he can avoid it. He um, managed to de-escalate the Cuban Missile Crisis. He's reluctant to send troops into Vietnam. But Stephen Witt doesn't like this. And lots of people didn't like this in the US. They want the US to get more involved. They want more troops in Vietnam, as Lyndon B. Johnson will do when he comes into power. Uh, they want more aggression towards Russia to stop them from expanding, towards the USSR, sorry. So what Stephen Weir does is he dresses up as Neville Chamberlain. Do you know who Neville Chamberlain is? <laughs> no, I don't. I know the name, but I don't know. So he was British Prime Minister just before the Second World War. Ah, okay. And he yes. was, I have my hand a piece of paper. He was a Munich Agreement, right. which gave Hitler Czechoslovakia. Didn't ask the Czechoslovaks before he did that. Just, just, just like, like, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so his policy was appeasement. And right. appeasement is give him what he wants and he won't take any more. We'll give him Austria with the Anschluss and we can trust him not to take any more. Except this is literally Hitler we're talking about. <laughs> okay, yeah, just, uh, just, so yeah. then he takes Czechoslovakia. Yeah. All right, fine. You can have Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovaks are all saying... No. John, yeah. Yeah. No, please. No, please. No. I'm not. <laughs> All right. He really cares, man. I'm sorry. But mm, given that, and he won't go any further. And then, of course, he invades Poland in September of 1939. But that was the policy of appeasement. So the thing is about Neville Chamberlain, he always dressed in a black suit. He always wore a bowler hat. And he always carried an umbrella. So... <laughs> Stephen Witt dresses in a black suit, wears a bowler hat, carries an umbrella, and he stands all by himself on the route. And he knows as JFK goes past, he will think, that guy's dressed like Neville Chamberlain. How does he know that? Because there's another layer to the story. JFK's dad, Joseph Kennedy, was ambassador to the UK during Neville Chamberlain's prime ministership from 1938 to 1940. And JFK published a book in 1940 all about appeasement. So the only person in the world <laughs> who's going to have a clue what this massive nerd is doing <laughs> is JFK. And so at the exact moment that JFK is shot, this very strange character is protesting in this very strange way. But the reason why I love this story is because you can just imagine the night before, Louis sat in the bar with his friends saying, you know the president's coming tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gonna go and see? Yeah. Just keep an eye on Dealey Plaza. Yeah. See what happens in Dealey Plaza. Might pop oh, up in the news. No. See what happens. Is <laughs> something interesting. You wanna tell us what you're gonna do? You got anything interesting planned? <laughs> mm, <laughs> interesting. Let's just see what happens. Keep an eye on the news. <laughs> and then of course the next night I didn't fucking mean that <laughs> <laughs> that is the Not worst time to brag about a secret of something you're going to do like exactly. you're just giving a little bit and then worst place at the worst time oh yeah I, I think his mates are kind of thinking where were you? How did you do that? We want to know what happened what the fuck were you talking about? <laughs> you didn't think you were going to kill him? <laughs> shit man I didn't kill him though well, you said you were going to kill him. That's how that we were going to have it. You yeah. told us you were going to kill him. No. <laughs> I told you I was going to... I just said keep an eye on Dealey Plaza. <laughs> I was trying to protect him. Keep an eye on it. <laughs> it's your fault. Put the yeah. blame on that one. So, and you can see it in the Zapruder film and you can see it in all the other footage. At the moment that JFK shot for the first time, he stood there with his umbrella, oh. looking like an absolute Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so much effort has gone into that. Yeah, that's such a nerdy protest. I love it. Yeah, that's There's good. Like that's 17 layers of knowledge to understand what he's doing. Specific. It is. That is 10 moves ahead mm. of everything, isn't it? That's And then you see someone bust back going, God, that was such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> such a, and I my idea is going to be, uh, something's happened today and no one's going to see my idea. <laughs> yeah, wasted. <laughs> what a waste of effort. Oh. There's just people on the bus. Why are you in a bowl of hats? <laughs> Umbrella. Sunny. Oh, yeah, no, I know you look God. like. Just <laughs> <laughs> like Neville Chamberlain. Thank you. Thank you. I knew someone would get it. Yeah, were you at the, were you at the plaza? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> what plaza? <laughs> president's been, you on there? No. <laughs> what president? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, this is just it's Thursday for me. This is what I do. Yeah, that's just typical people on the bus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. I, d- I feel really sorry for that guy. Yeah. What was well, his name again? Louis Stephen Witt, apparently. Louis we, Stephen Witt. Nobody knew Witt. who he was for, for years and years afterwards. Mm. And so JFK is assassinated in 1963. And um, for until the Zapruder film comes out, which is in about 1966, 1967, nobody really knows what happens. Everybody accepts the official verdict, which is one shooter and Lee Harvey Oswald from the Texas School Book Depository. But then in the 70s, and I think it's either 76 or 77, uh, the Senate investigates and they find him and he turns up in the um, in the Congress of the United States and pulls out his umbrella and goes, it's <laughs> just an umbrella. I'm not a murderer. I'm just weird. I'm just a bit mental. <laughs> Sorry. That, a, a bit creative mentalist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why don't you just make a sign? <laughs> In hindsight, in hindsight, <laughs> yes, hindsight is a beautiful thing. Good. Yeah. Well, we've done that. <laughs> what do you have, on the sign, what do you have drawn? An umbrella. <laughs> Brackets. <laughs> Not a murderer. <laughs> Not a murderer. <laughs> Just weird. Oh, if you actually had that sign, the, that would be that would be suspicious. That would be suspicious. I am not a murderer. <laughs> and the... the <laughs> yeah. yeah, that the, would be suspicious. Yeah, the guy yeah. who did the shooting is that I am. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because real life is that cheesy. Yeah, I wish it was sometimes. Well, this is quite that's this is quite cheesy. Well, that's and that's that's why I love it as a story. It's just the, the closer you look at it, the weirder it gets. Yeah, like it's it's weird already. Why has he got an umbrella? Because he's protesting. Well, why is he protesting in an umbrella? Don't ask. You know what? Just don't ask. No, but the fact only one person would know what that's about. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, it was the most important person he wanted to know. Like. If it was someone else, <laughs> that's JFK drone. Who's this umbrella? Who's this mentalist of an umbrella? <laughs> Just like one of the secret service agents. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good protest, man. Oh, was yeah. it? So it was a pink umbrella. No, no, it's black. It's was all black. It, it was Everything all black. black. In my head, yeah. it was pink for some reason. I don't know why. That would be ostentatious. Yeah. <laughs> Neville Chamberlain, no, all in black, but with a pink umbrella. With a pink umbrella. Yeah. That would be, yeah. Yeah. That's what I say from the Rocky Horror Show. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Neville Chamberlain's not that interesting. No. No. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. Mm-hmm. Wrong at, at many levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've never heard that story. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, That's one of the reasons why I love the... Let me rephrase that. <laughs> you have to cut that. But yeah. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I find the JFK assassination so interesting. Because every time you look at a detail, it just opens up an entire world of extra detail. Of, what? Is it solved? No. 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 The, the official version doesn't quite make sense, but nor do any of the conspiracy theories. We just don't quite have enough evidence to... to it's a perfect the murder. Then. Yeah, if... The perfect who, assassination. Un, unless it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Who was murdered three days later? Okay. So yeah, didn't didn't really go brilliantly for him. No. But if it wasn't him, then whoever it was completely got away with it. Did a very good job of that. Yeah. But wow. then if it wasn't him, you need about fifteen people involved. Yeah, you can't do that alone. No. Well, can we, can we not entertain the idea? Do you know when Americans shoot their guns in the air? Mm-hmm. Can we not entertain that idea? Did that work? Just um, like a collateral <laughs> of a, a byproduct of someone who's celebrating. <laughs> and so at this point, we'll produce the autopsy photos that he carries with him <laughs> for this occasion. <laughs> As you can see here. <laughs> was, this, uh, no, just, was this not the start of maybe them not having a convertible car for the president? Yeah, it was, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, after this, they put a roof on that car. That car was still in use until about 1972. Like they kept on using the car that JFK fucking died in. <laughs> so the the before, actual same car as well. Actual same car. They cleaned it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> a little bit sticky. Yeah. <laughs> There's bits of brain all over yeah. the place. No, they kept on using it to about 1972. And that, we might talk about this in another, of course we'll talk about the JFK assassination over yeah. and over again because it's just fascinating. The car was called a Ford Lincoln. And oh, you know, so know many, Yeah, you know about the, yeah. the way in which it overlaps. Mm. Lincoln, Kennedy... And uh, do you know what? Save that one. I'll save that one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I do, do, do you want to do it where you ask? ask? Sure. Uh, go to me. I have one more. I don't know. You could do the segue. I don't know. <laughs> Would you want me to do the segue? <laughs> Speaking of having your mind blown. 
Pierce Excellent Reeves stuff. with the chakra. <laughs> well, I have a question. Okay. I have a question. Well, it's, well, it's, it's, a, it's more of that's not a question or an idea. What if I was to say to you? <laughs> I might need a minute because that's the most inappropriate <laughs> thing I've ever said. <laughs> Obviously, you hear this one back. Do you want to try it on again? I think I'm going to go for the same thing, though. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of how your mind blown, <laughs> I understand that Reese has a question. Do have a question? Well, it's more of a more of a what would you think if? Okay. So what would you, what would you say? What would you think if I said there was there was an ocean in this mm. world that had no coastline? An ocean without a coastline. Yeah. Speaking of having your mind blown, blimey. Yeah. Are you is, are you getting deep on me here? Are we like a fourteen year old girl? It's like the ocean. It's the emotion. No, it's <laughs> come on. Oh, very good. No, this is a genuinely an ocean that has no land coastline. Okay, it's a real thing. It's the only coastline. It's the only ocean in the world without a land coastline, and it's in uh, it's in the Atlantic Ocean, and it's called the uh, Sargasso Sea. Ah, and you might have heard of the word Sargasso. I have before from the novel. Well, interesting. That does lead on to the novel. Okay. <laughs> got a bit of the novel here a little bit later as a bit of a side quest. Right. Okay. Because I've got the blurb of the novel, which is mental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've never read it, but I've, I've read Jane Eyre, so. Yeah, so it's Jane Eyre. I'll go to Jane Eyre in a bit, but mm. um, but I've, it's just a little bit. So this, the sargasso is a type of seaweed. Okay. And what it does um, in the Atlantic, it kind of floats around. Okay. Uh, but it. But it, there's something, it's, it, the type of seaweed is holopelagic, holopelagic. Hol- holopelagic, which means that it can reproduce floating on the, on the surface. Nice. And this this kind of like barrier that goes around uh, uh-huh. where it connects like in a big circle, <laughs> and I'm doing the hand actions. Um, they're very is, good, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> is, um, is the coastline. It's the, uh, the, huh. the actual seaweed is the coastline of the ocean. So like a cordon. Yeah, it's like a it's little like VIP e- section. E- yeah, it's like an eel turtle cordon. <laughs> Stops eel all- turtle cordon. That sounds like a South African golfer. <laughs> eel yeah. turtle cordon. Yeah, he's torn apart the players' yeah. championship at the moment. He's decent. <laughs> he's decent. Very wet. They're very yeah. He's always in the water. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's yeah. a better joke there. Always in the water. Always in the. <laughs> he's always wet. <laughs> <laughs> Stands in the rain. Plays golf in the rain. Plays That's not advisable, the by the way. Could, why not? Because you get wet. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> of course. Have you done it at a golf ball in the wet? Foiled again. <laughs> By logic. By logic. <laughs> My nemesis. <laughs> yeah. We're standing outside in the rain. Yeah. If you don't get wet, you've done well. You've got an umbrella. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and then you get accused of... You get accused of killing the president. <laughs> yeah. Right? You have to go down that line. Exactly. So that's why you always get wet in, in the rain, because it's dangerous to carry an umbrella. Could you play golf one-handed? Left there is a one-handed one. golfer that exists. Just one. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's, not. there's a friend. I think there's a professional golfer who is one-handed. He's one-handed. Yeah, and he uses so, but it seems he's he's left-handed because he's only got one hand. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but the point is, he has the right-handed swing in action. What? <laughs> 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 I can't think of his name, but I have seen it before. Uh huh. Yeah, and wow. he play, and he's um, maybe he's like a, do you know, I don't know. There's a is there a division between amateur and professional, but like in that middle bit. Do you know, I was really hoping he was bad at golf. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I'm just making, yeah. like, but he's better. quite. But he's because when you better than you'd expect. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Wow. Like he's got a scratch handicap, but um, I yeah. Don't so what that means. so he doesn't need to have any extra shots to go around a golf course. So he's I the, see. so if the if the part of the course is set say seventy two, uh-huh. he's expected to do it in seventy two shots. Seventy two shots. Yeah. I'm like me, who has to do it maybe like 95. Okay. <laughs> but okay. um, but no, he's, 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 wow. he's left-handed, mm. but does right-handed swings because that's the motion he has to do. Okay. As I do a golf swing action, if you that. didn't know what that looked like. <laughs> and again, dear listener, it was very good. So, okay, but that kind of makes sense to me because like, if you're thinking, if you're doing a backhand with a tennis racket, that's yeah. your left arm, isn't it? Not your right arm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Wait. So if you're no, using be forehand. I don't play tennis. Why am I using tennis <laughs> analogy? Squash? <laughs> no. No. Any racket sport that we... Ah, uh, squash is just sad tennis. It is, but okay. It was yeah. sad. Well, because you're inside and it smells like squash balls. Steady. <laughs> 
Inside and smells like. But, the, but a nice segue here is the inside of a tennis ball. Have you smelled that? No, I haven't. That smells beautiful. You yeah. not smell the inside of a tennis ball. When in my 30 years on this earth would I smell the inside of a tennis ball? When you were at school, did you play football on the playground? You have a tennis ball? We used to. Yeah, yeah. we didn't rip it open like a barbarian and <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, we did. It was like glue. <laughs> okay. I see. Type of school I went right. to. <laughs> okay. There we go. There no, we so go. this um so this sea, it's um so yeah, the, the Sargasso Sea. The Sargasso Sea, so it has no coastline. Yeah. And uh it's it forms at the point at the top of the where the Bermuda Triangle is. Right. So it's so, so just south of Bermuda, the Ooh. British overseas colony, and um, where all the uh, banks go and all the companies go to put all their cash and tax haven stuff. And because of that, it used to be a problem and people used to fear boats going through it because all the yeah. sealer would mount up on to their onto the underbelly of the boat. And it could be the cause of some of these missing ships that are claimed to be ghostly gone or whatever it is and taken mm. by the devil or whatever in this uh, Bermuda Triangle. No, it's but the eel turtle cordon. The, the eel turtle cordon, yeah. Wow. Did you know that eel, by the way? <laughs> it's, I didn't get, get the name of it, but it's from Europe. <laughs> what is? This eel. That, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's eel is endemic to this place. Uh-huh. But it is, it's, it, in, in its history, came from Europe. Oh, there um, is actually an eel that... Yeah, it's oh, yeah, endemic. It has, no, really. Oh. It's an eel that actually lives there. And it ended up there from Europe. Yeah, it's, it would have emigrated. <laughs> I don't know what it was doing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, migrated yeah. <laughs> and where would it keep his papers really? yeah right. the administration was terrible I didn't have it got its visa to go to the Saragas to the sea <laughs> the floaty yeah uh-huh. but wow. it's yeah but it's um, yeah and turtles nest their eggs also in the in the seaweed as well okay. because it floats on the surface it floats so wow it's, it's quite interesting that is yeah that is, so so but all I'm picturing now is the Bermuda Triangle then has kind of a circle intersecting the top axis of kind the of. top corner which it is very symbolic. We're talking about Illuminati. Stuff. Yeah, maybe, but, and maybe that. Maybe the, if we imagine the the, the Illuminati triangle, mm. and then the seaweed mm-hmm. is the is the circle that sits within it. Yeah, and the eye. It's terrifying. Could be, that is ter- maybe maybe it is. Maybe ships do go there. It <laughs> goes all the way down. Yeah. Wow. But the but it's a bit with the coastline itself. It's the mm. only ocean coastline which is what they call dynamic. Uh-huh. It, moves it moves due to all the coast, ocean currents. Uh-huh. It has five borders. There are two ocean currents in the north and then east, south and west. So it's like a, a massive target. Yes. Does Which boats have to circumnavigate <laughs> around to stop being eaten by the Illuminati. What a nightmare. And yeah. so how does it form into a circle then? I, I don't think really... Maybe it's not a circle. Maybe it's But just, it's connected. But it's connected together, yeah. Well, so I think because of all the ocean currents around the outside, a bit like a tornado, I suppose, or a hurricane right, so has, it's its, has its boundary. Circular current that kind of wow I had no idea about that this is quite cool it is it's also terrifying yeah absolutely terrifying yeah and even um, Columbus wrote about it in uh, in his journeys over to what he thought was India Uh Um, and he was saying um, in his diaries Columbus wrote at length about how he feared the Sargasso Sea because of its blankets of seaweed which he believed were hiding dangerous coral reefs which were capable of sinking unsuspecting ships. Mm. Yeah, well, I think, you know, in that time, that would be terrifying. It would. And he's not an easy man to frighten. No, <laughs> no, he's not. He's, one of the, he's horrible. Didn't he misname the whole of the Americans by thinking it was India? Yeah, yeah, he thought it was, yeah, because he's an idiot. Yeah, we'd definitely come far enough. Uh, Chris... <laughs> No, <laughs> was he was he was he asked to go by the Spanish? Yeah, well, he kind of asked the Spanish if they give him, and they were like, "Yeah, all right, yeah, sure, go ahead." <laughs> and um, Christopher Columbus, he's one of the characters that kind of nowadays people think um, people kind of say, oh, we got to judge him on his own time." He he was a horrific person, sure, and he murdered natives, but everyone was doing it. You can't play. let's judge him on his own time in his own terms. <laughs> the Spanish who were responsible for the Spanish Inquisition. These are not nice people. They thought he was a bit bloodthirsty. <laughs> so much so that when he came back, he was arrested and put on trial for being a complete bastard. Right. Like, he's not a good person. He's not a good person. No. What did no. his crew think of him? Or was he a lone I, wolf? <laughs> he would have killed anybody who... Disagreed with him. him. Yeah. Proper tyrant. Mm, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll talk about him in the future. Yeah, I look he, forward to that one. And we can link back to the Sargasso Sea. Exactly. Okay. horrific. But there you go, the Sargasso Sea. Yeah, which I think is quite, it's quite cool. And it does lead yeah. on to that book. It does. The, wa- the Wide Sargasso Sea is by the name of the book. Gene Reese, is that right? Yeah, by Gene Reese. And I just want to read the blurb. Okay. Because it's quite extraordinary. Mm. Because it's, it's, it starts 
relatively light mm -hmm. and then goes absolutely mental. Nice. <laughs> so um, The Wide Sargasso Sea, now by Jean Rees. Interesting, spot the same way as my name. Mm -hmm. Published in 1966. Any relation? Uh, not that I can remember. This is the surname, maybe, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we get to some flints later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the book details the life of Antoinette Mason, a West Indian who married an unnamed man in Jamaica and returns with him to his home in England. Okay. Locked in a loveless marriage, here we go, and settled in his inhospitable climate, Antoinette goes mad yep. and is frequently violent. Yep. Her husband confines her to the attic of, the house, of his house at Thornfield, only he and Grace Paul, the attendant <laughs> he has hired to care for her, knows of Antoinette's existence. Mm -hmm. The reader gradually learns that Antoinette's unnamed husband is Mr. Rochester, mm -hmm. later to become the beloved of the beloved of Jane Eyre. Mm -hmm. Much of the action of the novel takes place in the West Indies. The first and third sections are narrated by Antoinette, the middle section by her husband. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a mental story. Sounds like fun. Yeah. yeah. You read Jane Eyre? No, I haven't. I read it my first year of uni and there's a, there's a part in it where Jane, she's in this great mansion with Mr. Rochester and um, she hears like scratching in the walls and could potentially be some kind of weird spectral ghostly voices of some kind of screaming and crying and scratching and that kind of thing. And the evening that I read it was on New Year's Eve of 2011 and I didn't go out because I was feeling quite ill and I had, it must have been some kind of virus because I was also a little bit delirious. And we were in this massive house um, that uh, my dad got through the army for just for a year. And they were having a big um, New Year's Eve party downstairs. And so I was off in kind of one wing of this house, quite ill, in bed, delirious, <laughs> reading this book about noises and sounds and scratching and phantom ghost women. You scared yourself. Whilst I can hear exactly the same thing. Yeah. So That's good luck. Oh, well, I look forward to reading that, but maybe I'll change the environment I read it in. Yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't necessarily recommend that, <laughs> but it, just, it did bring it to life. Uh, well, it's, yeah, it's, if you want that experience. Yeah, yeah, if you want to be not literally scared shitless, because <laughs> it was a slightly different virus, but yeah. not far <laughs> off. Not far away. Not far off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I will, I will dig into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but I thought it was quite a nice little link because um, I, I, I wrote it down because I thought you may at least be aware of it and mm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you totally were. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you book nerd. Yep, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, I'm ready yet though. You've got one more, haven't you? I do. I've got uh, one more. Yeah. Um, this one I've called Do Your Job. <laughs> yes, uh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, how would I segue into this? I guess, like, what do you think the most important thing a king can do is? What's the number one job for a king? It is probably to run his, like, was it, I was to say dysentery. It's not that word. Dysentery? No, dynasty. Was dynasty. The word. Dynasty was the word. Yeah, and what would, what does that involve? Um, at the risk of getting PG-13. <laughs> Does he, does he just kill people that disagree with him? I don't know. No, nah, he's got to do something more important than that. He has to um, not take... He has to look after his people, feed mm -hmm. them, give them an economy. Is he involved in that? Yeah, but not necessarily. You can let him starve, whatever. It's not the biggest deal for a king. Okay, just stay alive. And what happens when he dies? Then his children... Oh, he didn't give birth to anyone. Have children. Oh, have children. He didn't have any children. Let me tell you about Louis the Sixteenth. Oh, oh, excellent. Louis I got there. That was like a proper little lesson. <laughs> Louis XVI, um, King of France, obs, 1774 till 1793. Uh, well, 1792, dies in 1793. Um, he was married quite young. He was married at the age of 16 to Marie Antoinette of Austria, who was 14. When they were married, they, they hadn't met yet. They married by proxy, <laughs> which is weird. That's weird. Yeah, so he just married someone else and she was <laughs> pretending to be Marie Antoinette. <laughs> And she did exactly the same thing in Vienna, which is mental. And um, when Marie Antoinette travels over to France, already married, having never met this guy, when she reaches the border between Austria and France, she has to leave everything Austrian behind, including her nursemaids, including her dog called Mops, including <laughs> her clothes, 
So at the age of 15, this poor <laughs> naked girl has to walk through the woods on the border between Austria and France. Without her mops. Without her mops, exactly. <laughs> yeah, she did get the dog back. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. Not her clothes, though. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> other French clothes. Um, but they meet, and Louis XVI had his his father um, wasn't Louis XV. His grandfather was Louis XV. His father, guess what his father was called? Louis? Yep. <laughs> he uh, died. He died before um, Louis the Fifteenth, so he was never king. But yeah. <clears throat> he died quite young for Louis the Sixteenth, which means that Louis the Sixteenth never really got taught about the birds and the bees. Ah, and so, he was a bit confused, was he? Yes, he was. <laughs> and um, bef- when when they got married, both partners had uh, inspections carried out to make sure that biologically everything was fine. And I'm not certain, but I like to think that this comes from the Habsburg kings because one of the Habsburg kings of uh, Spain was so inbred that he couldn't keep his tongue in his mouth. He just <laughs> and talk like that. And so that's apparently why in Spanish you don't pronounce Vs and Ss properly. You pronounce them with a massive lip. Because some part. guy was inbred yeah, intensely. Literally. Yeah. And he was so inbred that when he didn't have any children, um, and when they did an autopsy on him, this is Charles King of Spain, uh, they sliced open his scrotum, as you do. That's just the first place to go to, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> He's not even cold yet. Give him a minute. <laughs> um, and apparently his testicles were shriveled, black, and the size of peas. So they And good in the curry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vegetarian, so oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yourself. Um, but yeah, they inspected both Marie Antoinette and Louis, and nothing wrong. All good. Everything functioning. So they meet, they're supposed to consummate. She's quite young, 14, 15, the first year they meet, and he's quite shy and quite awkward. So Louis the 15th says, it's not a problem. Take your time, get to know each other, give it a year or two then start producing some kids. Two years later, 1772, um, Louis reports, it's not going brilliantly. It hurts. And it, yeah, it hurts. And that's all the information we've got. Apparently it just hurts. What's he doing? What does that mean? <laughs> well, he, what's he doing? Well, Ooh. we have a clue of what he's doing in 1773 because Marie Therese, Marie, Marie Antoinette's mother, who's um, Empress of Austria, writes to her and says, can you please give us a baby? We need a baby. Otherwise, France is screwed and Austria is screwed. We need a baby. <laughs> and she says, look, we've consummated the marriage, but not in a way that could lead to pregnancy. <laughs> what? what does that mean? <laughs> well, okay. There's a lot of... In- kind of done it, but don't be buying any baby shoes anytime soon. I've got some theories. I, th- I think, I think <laughs> what it means is that the train entered the station, but no one got off. <laughs> I think that's what ah, we're talking about. I here. see. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a problem. This is not just a personal, emotional, physical problem. This is a diplomatic, political problem. Kings need babies. King don't make baby, civil war. Uh, oh, that's, you don't want that. No. He doesn't have a baby by 1774. On 10th of May 1774, he becomes king. He's 20. Marie Antoinette, I think, is 18. By 1775, they're calling in the surgeons. And the surgeons oh, are God. Um, performing a... Sausageoscopy, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> they say that he's got nothing wrong with his dingus. This, this is a this is a fine brat burst. Oh, I mean, he's all good. She's all good. What's going on here? Yeah, just Let's get it. Just get just on with it. Put the thing in the thing. Just <laughs> yeah. Stop faffing and start. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> live, laugh, love. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this kitchen's made for dancing. Yeah. Stop fucking, stop fucking. Yeah. So 1777 comes around. We're seven years into their marriage. <laughs> and Marie Therese, who's still alive, um, Empress of Austria, sends her son, Joseph II, Marie Antoinette's sis- uh, brother, <laughs> to Versailles just to figure out what the hell is going on. This is the Emperor of Austria <laughs> being sent to the King of France <laughs> to look at his penis. <laughs> <laughs> to figure out why he's not having new babies. Did he go on a bank holiday? <laughs> <laughs> you say bank holiday there? Yeah, or, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just interject quickly. Yeah, yeah. You say for these, so for these seven years, and mm. have they been trying solidly? <laughs> yeah. Says, in a room, seven years. Well, this is the thing. This is one of one of the theories as to why it didn't happen for so long is because they don't sleep in the same room. They don't even sleep in the same apartment. That's a problem. To a lot start of the time, with. they don't even sleep in the same. Chateau. 
They on the grounds of Versailles, you've got the main palace of Versailles, and about five kilometers away, you've got the palace called Trianon. That's a long way to go for a shag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everybody knows that you're that's what you're doing. Yeah. So if he's if Marie Antoinette's not in Versailles, she's over in her own palace, which is half an hour's walk away. First of all, nobody's maintaining a chub for that long outside. No. Like, that's too long to walk. And secondly, everybody's ooh. Yeah, everyone knows what's going <laughs> there on. Here. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna go and have sex with my wife right now. Ooh, yeah. Go on, then. Oh, yeah. Well, as, if it was, tonight. as if it was unusual, but apparently it was. Yeah. <laughs> and even walking through the palace, like there's there's um the way that the Palace of Versailles worked is under Louis XIV, he built it up so that he could have every noble in France living in the Palace of Versailles so he could watch them. And by the time of the French Revolution of 1789, there's something stupid like 300,000 nobles in France. <laughs> and obviously not all of them are going to be in Versailles, but there's a good 10, 15,000 people in this palace at any one time. Imagine <laughs> <laughs> every time you have to go and fulfil your conjugal duties, you have a like a Division Two football stadium cheering you on. He's going to have sex. He's going to have sex. And he always pulls out of an own goal. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Joseph uh, II, Emperor of Austria, this is like the equivalent of like, I don't know, Olaf Schultz visiting Boris Johnson. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. Right. This is a proper diplomatic <laughs> visit. This is serious stuff. This is like the Queen visiting Joe Biden. <laughs> Uh, he writes back to his mother and he's been speaking to, to Louis saying, how's it going with my, oh, he's Austria, so. how's it going with my sister? Yeah. <laughs> In English. <laughs> In English, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, pretty good. It's all good. But you have a baby yet. Well, you know, we, we try, we keep on having sex. It's like, it's not, not happening. Maybe some fertility problems. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It's been seven years, but who knows? Um, just talk me through talk me through a normal evening then with Marie Antoinette. Okay. Well, she's in first of all, she's in a different postcode. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. horse and carts. <laughs> yeah. Head over to go and visit her. Hop in bed. The train enters the station. Mm -hmm. Job done. Hang on a second. Train enters the station, and then what? Well, job done. Ah. Are you sure you know what sex is? I don't right? think he you knows what's going on. You know you can't just put the hot dog in the bun. You've got to wiggle it. But you got it, yeah. What? <laughs> you've got to wiggle. <laughs> Nobody told me about the wiggle. <laughs> yeah, not just wiggle. You've got to vigorously wiggle it. it. I'm, I'm sorry. There's a point where this happens where he must go, oh, that feels quite good. I need to keep going. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. In seven years, he would have figured out, huh, there's some biological clues here. See, the thing the problem is that there is a point though, with Louis the Fifteenth, like there, there might be bad parenting here, but there is a point where actually, you know what, you should be able to work this out, Louis yourself. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is on him for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, and what um, is? Why did she not say anything? That thing. <laughs> why? How do neither of them know? And Marie Antoinette, she kicks ass. She's awesome because she's off. Like she has affairs with people. And mm. she, um, I don't think she has affairs yet, but she does later. Uh, and she's gambling all night and she's partying and she's she's ridiculously decadent. Um, but it just never crosses their mind to vigorously wiggle. And, <laughs> Lack of wiggle. And it just, it takes them eight years to have a child. Do they and get it in the end? They do eventually, yeah. They, um, they have a daughter. Guess what they call the daughter? Grandma was called Mary Therese. Um, <laughs> Louis. <laughs> not Louis, <laughs> funnily enough. No. We went Marie Therese, Marie Antoinette, and then back to Marie Therese. The okay. Called Marie Therese. They kept that, all that. Okay. And then three years later, they have a son called Louis. Correct. <laughs> yep. Louis Take, Joseph. Got that one. Who uh, dies in 1789 of spinal tuberculosis, which is oh, that sounds terrible. Oh. And he's dying right at the moment when, I mean, he stitched his dad up there. Yeah. Catching spinal tuberculosis because that's right when Louis needs to be concentrating on France. Because should have given him bananas. Should have done. Does that cure spinal tuberculosis? No, it doesn't. Probably <laughs> not. But it would have cured him. <laughs> and then they have a second son in 1785 called... Louis? Correct. <laughs> I'm good at this. Yes. Louis Charles. So we've got Louis, sons, Louis and Louis. L yeah. yeah and Does that brothers... stop happening? Is... No. <laughs> no. The brothers when... are called Louis. And when did it start? When Louis the first... Uh, funnily enough, with someone not called Louis. <laughs> yeah, the weird. Clovis. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's weird when that happens. Yeah. This name's, I've got, even when you're naming that. your child, I've got the name, <laughs> I've got it. And then he says, it's Louis, it's Louis. comes king. And then it's just Louis all the way down. The That's way one down. person's decision. But... How original of you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Where did you get that idea from? <laughs> no, it was Clovis the first, but Clovis in Latin is Ludovicus. And oh. Ludovicus in French is Louis, and in German is Ludwig. So we've got Louis in Bavaria, for example. There's Louis. Is everyone Bavaria. called Louis? Are we the only people not called Louis? <laughs> Pretty right, and they've had a King Louis. Although, isn't the second son of one of the royals called Louis? Like, isn't it Prince yeah. George, Princess Charlotte? Maybe. Prince Louis, something but I've like. just thought of a question, though. Yeah. What's the unlikely king's, an unlikely king's name? Uh, there's some good, weird old king's names like Dagobert or. Terence? <laughs> Ter- is there a King Terence? That sounds. Uh, I don't know if there is a King Terence. Clive. <laughs> King Clive is a terrible name. King Clive the Fourth. <laughs> King Keith sounds like <laughs> King Kong crap cousin. <laughs> he's hanging off of buildings. Yeah, and he's but not not them. Only on the second like, floor. Yeah, for the Oxo Town or something. Yeah. Crap. He hasn't got a woman, he's got a Barbie doll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't stop playing with toys, let's right, go King, in. Come on. It's the bonobo. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's Louis the Sixteenth. It takes took him eight years to learn how to have sex. Yeah, and and this is historically quite controversial because people think, did he actually have something wrong? Did he have something called phimosis, which is where you can't, your it doesn't it doesn't go up. It does go up, but nothing else happens after it that. Doesn't retract. Oh, so, it's, so it's very painful. It's it's too tight. The opening's too tight. Essentially. Oh, I see. You can't put the jumper over the head. Oh yeah, it's so, like when you put when you just put a jumper on, and you got glasses on. Exactly. And then your glasses fall off, yeah. and it gets lost, and it's yeah. a horrible experience. That's the thinking, and there was a bit of evidence for that because he did have some kind of surgery that he didn't really mention in his diaries. He just said had surgery today, but then the next day he said went hunting, and you can't really ride on a horse if you just had your ding. No, maybe it's maybe it's glasses. Maybe it was glasses. <laughs> there you go. So it might have been for most. It's probably not. It's probably just a complete idiot. Yeah, just. And that's quite common in Kings. It is. It is to that extent, though. I mean, come on. Yeah. So even an idiot can shag. There's lots of idiots around, so exactly. it must be working. It is literally the easiest thing in the world. So yeah, it's quite, yeah. It's not it's, challenging. It's not challenging. And that's Louis XVI. Oh, I, look, that's, I didn't know that much about Louis XVI. I just knew he was a king of France, and I'd heard of his why. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know about the... The, them having different relationships elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being, yeah, they, they and that, that's quite common at this point in time. Like kings and queens, just they don't like each other because they don't get married out of love at all. Yeah. It's a stupid idea. Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah, of course. No, to secure the dynasty and diplomatic relations with Austria, of course. Oh, humans are weird. Why yeah. did we decide that? It's mental. <laughs> but that's that's how people get married for the vast majority of human history. The idea of getting married for love is such a recent idea. Oh, no wonder the divorce rate is so high. <laughs> so bring back dynastic relationships hey. that's what I'd say haven't you recently just got married <laughs> yeah we secured a fantastic allegiance <laughs> Banska district so from Slovakia yeah so, perfect yeah should Wiltshire ever need help we just light the beacons yeah <laughs> they come about 10 Slovaks <laughs> sounds like a perfect storm and they'll help us out <laughs> yeah that's the plan Do we have an ending? Uh, I, hopefully that's filled in some gaps, so to speak. <laughs> oh, matron. As in, <laughs> as in, thank you for listening if anyone did. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but thanks for listening. Um, tell someone if you enjoyed it. Uh, when, when are we going to do another episode? We think every two weeks? Every so? two weeks could work, I think. Yeah, yeah. we can probably sustain that. Cool, cool. If you want to write in, then you almost certainly know us already. So send us a text. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll say that if, 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 if we put a couple of episodes down, I'm sure we can do a social something somewhere. Yeah. That works. Exactly. But yeah. Cool. Yeah. Th- thank Thanks. you very much for listening. Yeah. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. Exactly. Yeah. Goodbye. Cue the music. Gaps knowledge. Filling in your gaps. Gaps.